Hey everyone, so I'm super excited to introduce you to neural networks. Uh, they're this really cool idea from mathematics and computer science, and they've kind of been taking the artificial intelligence world by storm lately. Uh, if you notice your phone, you can kind of ask it a question, um, or you upload a photo, and your computer knows who's in it, or even what's in it, like if it's on the beach or something. And you may be curious, you know, how is this possible? Do they have people looking at these photos? Um, but I can tell you right now that I'm 100% sure all this stuff is being driven by neural networks. Um, so in this series, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about them with no background knowledge required. So we're going to understand all the math behind them. So ideas from linear algebra and calculus. We're going to understand how to write our own using Python. Um, and I'm going to take it very slowly, you know, for someone who's completely new to any of these ideas. Uh, so let's just get started thinking about what the neural networks allow computers to do today. So first of all, computers are better at seeing. Uh, in 2015, a computer actually outperformed a human at recognizing stuff in pictures. So if there was like a cat in a picture, it could say uh, there was a cat. Uh, and I guess maybe a person failed. Probably not on that, but definitely probably on identifying specific breeds of dogs, which computers are actually pretty good at using neural networks. So not only can they see better, but they can actually hear us better too. And again, this is using neural networks. Um, so if you ever you know, ask your phone a question, it's got to change those pressure waves uh, in the air into meaningful symbols that it can actually process. So using a neural network, it can do that, and with much greater accuracy than previous hand-engineered methods. And finally, what better way to respond to your question than by speaking itself? So computers are able to generate natural-sounding speech, um, and they even know what intonation, you know, if the, if the sentence ends in a question mark, they can kind of, huh, yeah, put that little question at the end. Uh, and this is all done using neural networks again. So they're really amazing. I mean, as you can see, they're extremely versatile. These are just three examples. They're generating art. Uh, they basically can solve almost any problem that you can throw at them. Um, and so in this series, I just want to get you started. Uh, we're going to start with a simple data set, and we're going to talk about how you would solve a problem manually. And then in the next video, we'll actually start using a neural network to automate the solution of that problem. And then in the video after that, we'll talk about how you actually train this thing using backpropagation and all these other ideas. So stick around for that, and let's get started with this first simple example problem. So it all starts with a farmer. She likes to measure everything around her. Uh, and she was growing some flowers one day and realized she hadn't measured them. So she decided that this day was the perfect day to take out her rulers and take some measurements. Why not? So she has two types of flowers. She has these red ones and these blue ones. Uh, and she has many of them, but we'll start with these two. Now she takes out her rulers and just lays them down, you know, one uh, going left to right here and one bottom to top vertically here. Um, and the rulers are a little sparse here on measurements, but we can use these grid lines uh, as a way to measure, so these units. So like this is one unit up, two units up, three units, four units, five units, and we can take some steps to the right too. We can take one step to the right, two steps, three steps, four steps, and so on. So she starts with the red flower, and she's going to pluck a petal off and lay it down a certain way on her rulers. So now she's going to start to measure. So the way she measures is she starts at this corner always, and she'll go horizontally first. So she's going to take one step, two steps, three steps to the right. And so this is her first measurement. It's the length of the pedal. And what she needs now is a table to put this in. So she draws on some paper her table over here. Uh, and this is where she's going to record all of her data. So she's going to take her length measurement and bring that over here and just write it down. Now she's going to measure the width of the pedal, so how wide it is here. So she's going to take, she's going to start again from the same corner, but this time move vertically. So she's going to take one step. And this one's actually one and a half steps. If you notice, we're right a half here, uh, halfway between this grid line and this grid line. So this is one and a half steps wide. You know, you could think of this as inches or any, any unit, really. Uh, and she's going to take this measurement and plop it right here next to width. And finally, since this was from a red flower, she's going to just record the color. And I just do that with this animation here, taking red. So red flower, we have a red dot, and the petal was three units long and one and a half units wide. So now she's going to do it with the next flower. She'll take a petal, pluck it off, and lay it down here, always, always lengthwise, horizontally, and the width will be vertical. So again, she's going to start in the same corner, and she's just taking these measurements. She's going to take one step and two steps. So this, this petal is two steps long, two units long, and then she'll start in the same corner again, but this time take one step up to measure the width here. So she sees a one and writes that down. And of course, she would never forget to write down the color as well. So we'll just make sure we, we realize that these measurements here were from a blue flower. So she has 
many flowers actually. And here are two more. And we'll just repeat the process here. So she takes one, measures the length. This one is four units long. So she takes that and writes it down, measures the width. This one is one and a half units wide again. So she writes that down here. And of course the color, never forgetting to write down the color. And she does the same with the next flower. This one just happens to be blue again. Uh, this one is three units long, one unit wide. So she's writing all this down. And of course the color at the end. So now she has some measurements, but of course she has many more flowers. So we'll let her just build a data set. So we'll let her record some more. And here is her complete data set. Now a data set is just a collection of measurements or just a group of numbers really. Um, so this is her data set. It consists of the color of the flower she measured, its length and its width uh, of the petal from that flower. So here's her data set and uh oh, what is going on here? Uh oh, it looks like she forgot to measure the color or just note down the color of this last flower. Uh oh, that's not good. So now she's a little upset. There's a bit of a mystery here, uh, and she cannot be happy unless her data set is complete. So she has to think about this problem. Uh, there's a few ways that she could solve this that immediately come to her mind. She could compare these numbers to the other numbers, and maybe um, if they're similar, she kind of assumes that like, uh, you know, red flowers, their measurements are all fairly similar because they're, they're all coming from a certain type of flower, and blue flowers, their measurements are all fairly similar. So she could do that by, by uh, just remembering these numbers and comparing them, but there's a lot of numbers here and it's, it's kind of a pain. Uh, so she has a better idea. What she's going to do is graph them. So again, she takes out her rulers and making sure to be consistent, uh, she'll take the first flower that she measured, the, just the color is important now, um, and she's going to start in the same corner. You know, this graph can be anywhere as long as you just start in the same corner. Uh, she's going to take the, the length measurement here and take three steps to the right. So she's basically going to plot these points, uh, and then we'll see what happens after she does that. So she's going to take three steps to the right, and then we'll look here, it's one and a half steps. So this is going to be one and a half steps up, and then she'll leave a mark. And we'll do the next thing for the next flower. We'll take, starting from the same corner, two steps to the right for the length, and one step up for the width, and she'll leave a mark. And we'll just let her do the rest of that. I mean, she kind of enjoys graphing, so she's very quick. So we have all these other colors, and she'll just put them in the right places here. And now you get to see her reasoning. We look at the mystery flower. We're going to do the same thing, even though we don't know its color. We'll just bring this question mark down, start in the same corner. We'll look at the first measurement, four and a half. So we'll take four and a half steps to the right. And then we'll take one step up for the width. And look at that. The question mark kind of lies among all these other red flowers. And so she doesn't have to compare the numbers by just remembering them and looking at them. She can just see it immediately. That, you know, she's going to take, she has to guess. She'll never be, be uh, certain, but she's going to take a, a good guess that this flower was actually a red flower. And she seems pretty satisfied with that. I mean, you know, it could be uh, a really strange blue flower that, that uh, is longer than the rest, which is possible. But if she had to take a guess, it'd probably be best to guess that this was a red flower. So she puts her little color there. She's satisfied with that. And she has her complete data set. So that was very good. You know, she, she solved her problem, the mystery flower problem. Um, but she had to kind of do it herself. You know, she had to uh, actually graph all of these and then kind of make a call uh, about if this flower was red or blue. But she has a friend. And her friend is a computer. And the computer has a brain which could do the same task for her if she taught the computer how to do it. And we call that brain a neural network. So this is a little diagram of a neural network. And this could let the computer automate that task that our farmer had to do. Uh, and the computer can do it a lot faster than her. Let's say there were like 10,000 flowers instead of, you know, whatever it was, 10. Um, the computer could just crunch through that data very quickly uh, and give her an estimate much faster than she could do herself. So she wants to, you know, talk with her friend too. She likes a computer. So she's going to train the computer's brain to basically predict uh, the flower. And in the next video, we'll actually cover what this diagram is. You know, it has these nodes and connections. So we'll actually go over what each element is. And in the video after the next one, we'll cover how she actually trains this neural network to automate the task that she had to do manually. So thanks for making it through this video with me. Uh, I realized there really wasn't much of anything about neural networks in this one, uh, except for this diagram, which I haven't even covered yet. Uh, so you'll have to just trust me that in the next videos, uh, I'm going to break this diagram down. You're going to understand what these little symbols mean. 
Um, and in the next video, we'll also cover stuff like inference, uh, and we'll be introduced to some ideas from linear algebra, so vectors and matrices. You know, we'll start to take some small steps towards understanding uh, everything involved in a simple neural network like this. So stick around for that next video. You know, hit that like button or dislike button, however you really honestly feel. Um, I love any feedback. You know, I'm just starting out with these, uh, so any feedback is really, really valuable for me. And I hope this made sense. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.